Yo, Sergio in Boundbrook, New Jersey. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and I'm going to show you how I cut photochromic transitional lenses for your new Ray-Ban 5121, the Wayfarer color 2000, which is the classic shiny black and the 50 eye size. So let me take it out and you will be receiving all the original packaging that they send it to me in. This is your Ray-Ban Wayfarer case, your Ray-Ban frame, and your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth that is inside. Ray-Ban sends it to me with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple. They do that to prevent scratches during shipping. Well, if they think it's a good idea to ship it with one, well, I'm going to put a second one on this other side, just so we'll have twice the protection when I ship it to you. So let me go ahead and begin. I'm going to take both of the plastic sleeves off. Your original demo lenses are still in the frame. The left one says Ray-Ban on it. I'm going to pop those out really quickly. And I'm going to put them back into the bag because you will receive all the original packaging. But I'm going to take your frame and put it into the tracing element of my Santa Nelly, the LE1000 patternless edger. And the stylus is coming up and it's tracing the shape of the right lens. And that's going to move over and trace the shape of the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy a genuine authentic frame and you get free, clear, single vision prescription or non-prescription fashion lenses, which is what you did this time and you just paid the upgrade to the transitional lenses. So I'm gonna pull the shape up onto the computer. If this were prescription, I'd put your pupillary distance in there now, but because it's just for fashion, I'm gonna have it match the frame. This is a polycarbonate lens that I'm cutting for a Xyle frame, which is an old school name for plastic. And I know from experience that this frame has a deep bevel and I'm gonna take it down about a quarter millimeter so it's easy to pop in first time around. These are your photochromic polycarbonate lenses. I'm gonna take each one out of its protective sleeve that they sent it to me and give that a toss. Now, this block is what's gonna hold it in place while it is cutting to make your final shape. So 3M, the same people who make the post-it notes, make some little optical stickers. The black side is the sticky side. It's a double-sided tape. I'm going to pull the paper off and make that side sticky. And I'm going to stick that onto the middle of the lens. I'm going to do the same thing for your other lens. Stick one side down, pull the tape away. Stick the other one on the lens. Now I'm going to put this into the Chuck, or as I like to say, the Charles, because I don't know well enough to call it Chuck. But the first thing that's going to happen, apart from my bad humor, is these calipers are going to come down and it's going to trace the shape of your right lens onto this lens to make sure it's large enough to cut out. It's starting on the rear surface, the concave surface, which is closest to your eyelashes. And then it's going to move over and trace the convex side, which is the, the front surface, which sits away from the face. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. It's that lighter color wheel that looks like a heavy grit sandpaper. It's going to grind away your lens material on this wheel in the center with that little channel, that valley. That's what's going to cut the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I will have to close the door in a moment, but for now I just want you to see as your polycarbonate transitional lenses touches down onto the cutting wheel. Take your frame out and get that ready. Now your lenses are polycarbonate. Polycarbonate, well let me back up a little bit. There's four main, three main lens materials. There's glass, plastic, and polycarbonate just mentioned. Glass has gone by the way of the dinosaur and you occasionally see that in a few sunglasses, but for the most part no one wears it for clear lenses just for the sheer chance of it breaking. If you get hit by rock or anything like that. Now the other medium is plastic, which is very common. The next material that I'm using is called polycarbonate. Your, the polycarbonate lenses you are receiving are 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. Sergio, your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin from overexposure, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes now. If you notice your lens is completely flat at the edges, if I were to take it out of here, it would stand up on its own like a nickel. But I won't be taking it out of this. I'm going to wait for the bevel to go on. So these are the same high quality ophthalmic lenses that I would put into prescription frames. If someone did not have a prescription in one eye, this is exactly what you're getting because you need no prescription in both eyes. 
Now, if you notice, there is water running in the background, but polycarbonate cuts dry, where plastic and high index cut wet. There will be water jets that kick in in just a moment, but that's only to wash away any optical debris in the final stage of the cutting process. <laughs> Come on, water jets, where are you at? Where's my jets? There we go. There's my jets. So, this whole machine costs about $30,000. I recommend everyone go out and get one. Put it on your kitchen counter, then you can cut lenses at home. You won't need me to do it for you anymore. But in just a moment, I will take it out and see if your lens fits. If not, I'll take it down just a little bit until it does snap in comfortably. Okay, out it comes. I do want to dry your lens off before I mount it so it's not slippery. Now, you still have a little bit of rough edges here that's left over from that cutting cycle. So I'm going to use my hand stone, which is completely flat. I can put my finger on it while it's running, and my finger gets warm due to the friction. But it is that friction that allows me to put what's known as the safety bevel. I run the outer edge on it. And this white powdery substance that you see me scraping off, this is called Schwarf. And I do this so much, I've worn a V-shaped bevel into my thumbnail from scraping the edges of lenses all day. My friends call it my occupational thumbnail. And once I get it all off of your lens, I collect it onto the counter very neatly and very carefully. I wipe it onto the floor. And this is where I say, kids, stay in school. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like that. If you want to learn to make a mess like me, kids, you got to stay in school. So to see if this fits, I'm going to tuck it in at the outer corner, which is closest to me. Then using my thumbs, I press in and it snaps in perfectly. So I'm going to flip this over to the left and I'm going to cut your left lens. I'm going to put it into the chuck and hit start. Just like before, the calipers are going to come down and trace the back surface, the concave surface first. Then it's going to move over and trace the con convex side of the lens, all the while measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly where to place the bevel. Now again, your lenses are thin, you never have to worry about them protruding out of the frame, but if this were prescription, it would be finding a way to center that bevel as well as possible for the best cosmetic finish. Sergio, for yours, it's a piece of cake, it's a perfect cosmetic finish. Once it starts cutting, I'm going to continue to work on your right lens, but for now, I just want you to see as your second lens, unbreakable bulletproof lens with both UVA and UVB as it touches down onto the cutting wheel. Okay, so I'm going to take this block off. It is no longer needed. This black sticker I will take off. I do want to use a little bit of optical grade acetone to go ahead and clean your lens. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick inspection. Not only are you getting the Ray-Ban case and the Ray-Ban cleaning cloth that comes with it, um, but I'm going to include one of my own premium microfiber cleaning cloths as well as instructions on how to care for both cleaning cloths and the case so it will last you for years. That is perfect. No other seller on the internet gives you that information. In fact, no other seller does what I'm about to mention where a few years ago I started taking pictures of all my patients when they came to pick up their prescription glasses. I got the idea from my barber shop. And now a couple years later I have hundreds if not thousands of smiling faces on several digital picture frames in my office. And because I am a people person and I can't take pictures when you come to pick these up because I'm mailing these them to New Jersey. So I simply put in a photo request for you to take a selfie and send it to me so you can brag to your friends that you are a Ray-Ban model on my website. Come on guys, come on Sergio, help me build up a, an internet database of pictures. Send me your selfie. Come on, get Jersey on me. Get Jersey on me. Man, is that song catchy or what? So this is the final stage of the left lens being cut. The water jets will kick in in just a moment to clean any optical debris. But of course, as you know, I'm going to put more on there as soon as it comes out of there. But I just want the machine to know that it's trying. There you go. Feel good about yourself, little machine. 
little $30,000 machine. As soon as we get the left lens mounted, I'm going to show you how your lenses turn from light to dark and then back to clear again. And I'm almost positive no other seller on the internet lets you watch your glasses being made. But my RX prescription patients love watching me make their glasses. They stand right next to me and ask lots of questions, but because you can't be in my lab tonight, I'm going to do it for you. Of course, this whole process takes about 20 minutes. It is now 7.55 on Wednesday, May 28th, 88 degrees in my hometown of Durham, North Carolina, which is halfway between Atlanta and Washington, D.C., and halfway between New York and Miami. So back to the handstone real quick, back to the safety bevel, back to my thumbnail scraping that off. You know what's coming next once all of it's on the counter. You know what's coming next. Collect it all. This time behind the back. Woo, look at that technique, kids. Kids, kids, how many times I got to tell you, stay in school. So, let's go ahead and get your left lens mounted. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner. Then using my thumbs, I press down at the nose. That snaps in perfectly. I'm going to take that block off. I'm going to use my optical grade acetone to remove any adhesive residue from the stickers that were on your lenses. Again, quick inspection. And one thing I want to mention is that 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So if you get these and they're too loose or too tight or one side is higher than the other, perfect. Um, you know, stop by your local place and it only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to get them adjusted. But I want to make sure they're in standard alignment, meaning that when I put them on the counter, there is no wobble. I have one ear that's higher than the other. In fact, 80% of people do. So there's a four in five chance that these will not sit level and you'll have to get them adjusted. So stop by your local place. But for now, they are in standard alignment. There is a three-point stance one two and the bottom of the frame being three i press down there is no wobble i flip it over press down again there is no wobble i make sure that each temple overlaps perfectly and there's the same amount of tension on each hinge and these are the high quality triple barrel hinges this frame should last you for years and years and years so these are your lenses while they are clear i'm going to go ahead and activate them meaning that i'm going to make them turn dark i've got a little transitions box that has a strong uv light I'm going to put that in there. Now, as you will see, all transition lenses will get dark on day one. This is very important, Sergio. Pay attention. All lenses get dark on day one. Give them two weeks of constant exposure every day, and they can continue to darken until they get to their final setting. After a couple weeks, they will be at their maximum performance, and they will work for years that way. The only time they will not work is if you're inside of a traditional car your windshield absorbs all the sun's ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun and that's why your lenses will not turn dark in a car. Now if you have a convertible or a motorcycle they will darken. They're also temperature sensitive meaning that once it gets into the 90s and especially triple digits they just don't get as dark as they do when it's 85 and below. I like to remind everyone at 100 degrees you're miserable, your glasses are miserable, no one wants to work when it's 100 degrees outside. So that's it in just a moment I'm going to take them out now again, this is your frame with the dark lenses. And again, Sergio, don't worry. They're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks till they get to their final setting. If anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. And Sergio, hopefully you enjoyed watching me cut the lenses for your frame. And everyone else got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.